Hey everyone, Chris here from Glade Farm. Welcome to Breaking Bread. This is where we talk about how to um, go about making bread here. And I've been at this for about seven years, so and it's all made from scratch and simple ingredients. What you see me doing there is um, taking some of the pasta dura flour, which I buy in 10 kilo sacks in bulk, and I put that on in uh, a heap teaspoon, a heap um, cup in the bowls, as well as a little bit on the bench. Also, add a bit of um, grains of choice into the mix, and those are, that's from a seven grain mix. You have to add salt to bread mix, otherwise it tastes very, very strange. Um, it's a very bland mix if um, bread without salt. You can do it, uh, but the salt also acts as a um, a mild antibiotic and it stops the um, it stops the bread from going stale. Uh, the yeast food we add a teaspoon of that to the mix each, and that can be substituted for sugar at a pinch. Um, basically, it's something for the yeast to eat when they're in the mix. I add two teaspoons of baker's yeast as well to the dry mix, and now I mix it all up together without adding water and that's to ensure that all of the ingredients are mixed together. It's quite straightforward really. Um, you just sort of turn it around a couple of times and the whole lot will actually mix together. Any lumps you get in the flour that might have, I mean a bit of moisture if it gets into the flour it can um, perform lungs. And add a bit of water to the mix and then stir it up a little bit and basically working all of that dry mix into a and what you really want is a sticky sort of consistent mix that um, and a reasonably clean bowl that picks up all of the materials in that uh, bowl so just turning and turning it's always best to add um, too little water than too much um, if you add too much water you have to add a bit of extra flour to bring it back to a more consistently dry mix and you can see it's just about ready to turn out onto the flour on the bench. Man, that's looking pretty good. We'll do the same to the other bread bread loaf. Uh, mix it in. And again, you can see I've added too little water. That's always a safe thing to do. Mix it up, mix it up. And just cleaning the sides, all the material off the sides of the um, glass bowl into the center of the mix. The glass bowl ends up looking pretty clean at the end of it all. There's no point wasting any materials. E everything cleans up, cleans up really well anyway. We're still mixing up, mixing up. And it still looks a bit dry to me, so I might add a bit more water, I think. Yep, there you go. It's um, adding water is like something I've just worked out by feel. You can see that it, um, the bowl's looking quite clean now, and just about ready to turn that out onto the bench. And now it's on the bench. You need that flour in the bench into the um, the bread uh, mix. What you try and do is just make sure it's a nice dry outer coating so that it doesn't stick to any of the. Um, to the um, baking tins. I also use a bit of baking paper and that, um, you can get multiple uses out of that. What you're seeing here is basically about as much as I am prepared to knead the dough. It doesn't really need any more kneading than that. Anyone who says it needs hours of kneading, well they're talking porky pies. But the, the, re the yeast in the mix will actually um, make the uh, bread mix rise and you can see it's quite flat really it's a, it only takes about a third of the height of the tray I move all the extra materials into the other um, bread loaf and I'll start mixing that up and it's doing the same thing it's just making a drier outer coating so you don't really need much um, flour for that and it takes a little while to, to mix all of the um, flour in and the drier the mix is the longer it will take but you can see it's not really sticking to the bench at all and it's coming away as a single um, doughy lump 
And that's really actually all the kneading you're going to have to do. Then you just start push it into a bread like shape and cleaning your hands now and I'll add a few seeds to the top of the mix and a bit of olive oil. The seeds in the olive oil are important because they help brown the, um, ba uh, the loaf when it's baking and the seeds give it a little bit of extra taste. You don't really need to add much olive oil at all. At all. Obviously you'd want to be careful using other oils because olive oil tastes really good. I'm not sure about other oils. So I'll leave that to from uh, one to three hours to rise. Piece of cake. The longer you leave it, the um, more it will rise. And then you chuck it in the oven and bake at 150 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. Different ovens require different uh, baking temperatures. Gas is probably about 190 Celsius and a wood oven will be about 110 Anyway, you chuck it onto a um, tray to cool before eating, and it's ready to eat in about 5-10 minutes once it's cooled down. Anyway, thanks for watching.